the three most important investing charts today. What's happening, everybody? Markets went crazy, rallied bigly last week on the employment report. I've dug into it, pulled out the three most important takeaways and charts from it, and we're going to assess what this means going forward. So this was by far the biggest relief from last week's employment report. It shows average hourly earnings, and there's a clear downtrend now from 7% down to about 5% in the most recent reading. So you might be wondering, though, why the heck would rising wages be bad? Well, from the Fed's perspective, they're super worried about what's called a wage price spiral, which is sort of a self-fulfilling prophecy of higher future expected inflation from wages. And so the Fed is trying to avoid that scenario. And so these falling wages being inconsistent with the 1970s so far is a good sign. The second most important takeaway and really one of the most interesting pieces of data in the employment report was temp help. Now, why would temp help matter? Well, every time we've had a very deep recession historically, this data goes really, really deeply negative. And that makes sense because if you think about employment and the cycle over the course of its natural evolution, well, it makes sense that one of the earliest things to go would be employees who are temporary. So we're starting to see temp help decline. We're seeing the number of hours work decline. And so the question now is, are we going to actually see the unemployment rate start to increase for the rest of the year? The reason all this matters is because the Federal Reserve, of course, and the overnight rate. And so right now, the overnight rate's at 433 on the effective funds rate. I think they're going to move 50 bips probably at the January, February meeting, and then they're going to go another 25 at the March meeting. And that'll allow them to get to five and then ease off and reassess until the June and summer meetings. Okay, but we're not dum-dums here at 3-Minute Macro. We're all really, really smart, right? So we're looking way into the future. And so far, Fed Fund's futures pretty much agree with that assessment. They're going to leave rates at 5% all through 2023. But then rates are going to start to drop pretty sharply, down to 3% by the end of 2024. So what are the three big conclusions and takeaways from these three great charts? Well, number one is that a return of the 1970s looks increasingly low. Number two, though, unfortunately, while the 1970s scenario looks increasingly low, the 2008-ish looking scenario isn't off the table. The risk of the Fed having over-tightened and making a policy mistake in the other direction won't really fully be known until we see the rest of the real estate cycle play out, probably 2024 at the earliest. The third big conclusion is the most interesting for me because I think that people are going to look back at this period, this full year of 5% interest rates, and they're going to say, holy cow, was that a risk-free gift? And so managing your cash over the course of the next 18 and 24 months is going to be completely contingent on what the Fed does. And I hope that this video helps you kind of navigate that going into 2024 and 2025. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you learned something new. I'll catch you next time.